Sukkot created what we know as the Olmec civilization. Now, why is all this important? And is it just all neat, or is it just exciting? I mean, for, for myself, enough, it, it, it's exciting enough. But history, and this history, is very important because it's suppressed. It's, it's not common currency. You go to the colleges or the universities, they will still tell you there's nobody here before Columbus. Why is that? Well, an archaeologist, as I mentioned to some of the people here before the talk, archaeologists don't make much money. They can make money if they teach. And what they do, the archaeologist, he makes a name for himself in the field with the idea that eventually he'll go on to the university and he'll have tenure there. Well, then when you get to be a professor, what do you do? You write a textbook, right? And in the textbook, this is your authority, and means all your students and all your classes have to buy that textbook, right? And if it goes on and on, you've got this income. So then, and you, in this textbook, you make sure you don't offend any of the powers that be, make sure you've got your place there. So sure, only Columbus was here. Then somebody comes along and says, look at all these black people that are there. Oh no, that's impossible. No, could, couldn't possibly be there. He doesn't dare admit that because his textbook would be outdated. He'd have to get rid of his textbook. Nobody would buy his textbook anymore. His main source of revenue is over with. But that's a lie nonetheless. Too bad. It's a lie. Um, black people were disenthralled. They lost their slavery status. True. That's physically, that's over with. But if you raise generation upon generation in which you tell your people in America, your only heritage here is slavery. That's it. The white people, they had kings and queens and all that stuff. But we only came from it. That is a form of psychological slavery still. It's a form of psychological bondage. And I tell you what, myself, I would rather be a physical slave than a psychological slave. Yes. I, can, I can rebel against physical slavery. Psychological slavery, that will really mess you up. Yes. So, it is vitally important that this information is made available. This is how you disenthrall yourself. This is how you find real respect when you say, okay, yes, slavery was part of our culture. It really happened, but that's not all. And we had people building civilizations here, not only before Columbus was born, but before Spain was born, we had great societies rising here. Then you develop a real sense of self-respect and real uh, connectedness with the land. Now, why is it important to, to me? That's because it's part of my heritage, too. I'm an American, too. And these people that are suppressing this thing about the blacks are also suppressing the thing about Asians being here. And there were definitely Asians that came here. And Vikings and everything else. This is, America apparently was a melting pot long before the Statue of Liberty came around. The other lesson to be learned from it, and, and, and this is vital. Look what happened when the Spaniards came here. They exterminated everybody. They enslaved everybody. They coughed on everybody and gave everybody diseases, wiped everybody out. That's the kind of heritage that they did. They, all these previous great civilizations, we don't know anything about them because they scrubbed them clean. That's what, and we're just picking up the pieces now. Uh, and it was hardly any better when the Anglo-Saxons came to North America because when they came here, they saw this beautiful country. Do you think they said, oh, look how pretty the trees are in the valley? Well, I might have figured it out. You know what? They let, well, I can make a profit out of that. I'm going to make money off of that. And so they cleared the trees, they cleared the Indians, everything else, just for the idea of profit. And they wiped everything out. The difference was, is that when the Africans came, and others too, to the Americas, they didn't come with that attitude. Let me give you an example. There's a guy whose name, I can't remember, I have to look it up. Abu Bakari of Mali in the year 1300 AD. Abu Bakari was this black king. And we know, this is not speculative, folks. This is stuff that is chronicled by the Arabs, not by blacks, by Arabs who visited. In the year 1300 AD, he amassed a fleet of 400 ships. He talked about Columbus with his three ships. This guy has 400, a fleet. And he's going across to the Americas. And you know what he loaded up his ships with? Gold, iron, and textiles, and feathers. No weapons. He didn't set out to conquer anybody. He went out to trade. He went over there to this rich land to set up trade. And that appears what really happened. These different groups came over not to take it. There might have been conflicts, I'm sure. But the main thrust of all these things was to set up trade in a mutual bargaining system. And that's what created the Olmec civilization. Because Olmec civilization, I don't mean to say it's totally black. 
that it was something that was created only for black people. But no, the leadership was black. And they used and they worked, cooperated with the native people to create an indigenous civilization. You see, this is the thing where they, our critics will say, the archaeologists will say, oh, only civilization that has nothing to do with the blacks because if that was the case, you'd have a, an African civilization that's transported into America. And that's not what the Olmecs are. But we're not saying that, see. The Olmec civilization is where you brought black expertise, black mineralogy, and so on, worked with the local people, and created something different. That was the Olmec civilization. So that is the, the thing to, to realize, that there is a spirit of cooperation. It's through respect, and we have a historical precedent for that now, see. And I think that leads to uh, um, lessons for the future. They didn't abuse the environment. They created a great civilization that lasted for a long time. Well, that's about all. I don't want to keep you out too long on this. I'm going to show you some slides. And if you have any questions, you can uh, certainly interrupt the, uh, the action here. I think we have to probably douse these lights, though.